Hello everybody. Today we're going to make a square bowl. I've got this piece of Siberian elm that's got a little bit of a unique shape to it uh, when you look at it from the end. So I thought it'd be able to give us a nice little square winged bowl. Um, first thing I'm going to do is square up one end uh, using my uh, Laguna bandsaw. I've got a uh, carbide tipped resaw king blade in here. Doesn't turn circles worth a darn, but man, does it make some nice square cuts. Um, as you can see, I'm just using the uh, fence to figure out what square is going to be. And slide it off like a hot knife through butter. But, as you can see, you can get a really nice clean cut off of that. Alright, and then we're going to mount it my normal way, like I, with a uh, woodworm screw. I'm just going corner to corner, drawing some lines. That gives me the exact center. Yeah, rear to the lathe. I use a uh, my normal five ace bowl gouge. Sweat back this uh, and grind on it. Start off knocking the corners off and uh, establishing where the base is. Stopping off in the check. Taking lighter passes than I normally do. Because um, originally I was going to leave it kind of like this. But I didn't like that. Alright. I have a little gauge made up for doing mortises and tenons. Um, I'm going to do a mortise on this one. So it's basically a no-go gauge. It shows me my ma maximum mortise size that my chuckle grab. And the minimum mortise size that my chuckle fit into. As long as I'm in between those two then I know my bowl will fit in my job, my chuck. So I was just kind of holding it on the base there to uh, make sure my base was big enough. And uh, once I decided it was, then we can go do some a uh, little bit better shaping. Now work my way up to uh, getting the uh, wings just the way I want them. Um, as so you see, I got a little bit more to go. The goal is to try to keep everything square. Um, you'll see in the high speed, I uh, hold the gouge up against it to check for square. But, you know, we got a little bit more to go here. I don't want any of that flat stuff in the round stuff, if that makes any sense. Right, almost there, just a little bit more. There we go. That's the way I want it. Everything's square. The bowl is just inside the edges of the rim. That'll be good. Alright, now we're going to go and uh, set up and cut our uh, mortise on here. You see I mark it out. And double check, just to make sure, because I usually run tenons. Um, I don't do mortises very often. Most of the time it's either a tenon or my uh, face plates and glue box. Anymore, I prefer the faceplate and glue block. It's time-wise, it actually saves me time. It's faster to use the uh, faceplate uh, with the hot glue method. But I wanted to do something a little bit different, showcase something a little bit different. As you see, I'm checking to make sure the depth is right. I want you know at least three A's, maybe more, and making sure it fits. So the min fits, and the max does not fit. That means I know it's good to go. It'll fit my jaws. I don't have to worry about it. Alright, now before we flip it around, we're going to sand it. We're going to go from 80 to 400. Um, and I'm going to show you I've got a bit of a process. There's a few cracks in it. And uh, so I've got a process. I kind of wrote it on the board here just so I remember to do this process. This works perfectly every time. Um, you can pause it to read that, or I'm going to go through it. So we're going to start out with 80 grit. This is like the final shaping and 
getting everything trued up so it takes the longest. And there's a little bit of a, I peel the uh, paper off the pad there and do it by hand to get that corner. Let me go 120, do the same thing. I've got this sped up like 1200% or something like that. And then 180. Say so this 180 doesn't take a lot. It's a pretty quick grit. Because we're going to be coming back to it at 180 here in just a second. So now that I've got the, the first pass at 180, I'm going to throw some sanding sealer on the cracked areas. I don't necessarily put it on the entire piece. I just do the areas with cracks. And I do a big enough area to where you won't notice it. So I stay within like the grain lines. I set for 15 minutes and walk away. Um, after the 15 minute mark, the sanding sealer is dry and we're good to go. And I'm going to take my Sandiflex and uh, sand up these natural edges here. That's the only way to really do it. Um, works well. Um, I like using it on my cordless drill. I found the cord to drill. If you screw up, the cord will wrap around that Sandiflex head and it'll rip it right out of the drill itself. And also a little bit of uh, hand sanding on the end grain piece. Um, I'm not sanding. I show this in real time because I'm not taking a lot off of the uh, sanding sealer. I'm just, just a little bit um, to help clean it out of the actual cracks. But I don't want to take it out of the end grain because I don't want the CA to soak up in the end grain. And blow it out with the air gun. And then it'll be on to super glue. Um, use the Starbond medium with the accelerator. And you notice it's not sinking into the end grain. It's only going into the cracks. It's like staying on top. That's what I want it to do. And then we set for another 15 minutes. And walk away and find something else. This is another reason I like using the uh, glue block on the faceplate. Because I can just peel it right off and do something else. Um, I'm sanding just the CA and then... I spin it up and sand the whole thing at 180 again. Back to it by hand. Once you get through this 180 grit, the uh, 240, 320, and 400 go pretty quickly. And you notice I also sand in the uh, inside the mortise too, because that very centerpiece of the mortise—that's the final grit for that, no, the final sanding for that. There we go, she's shiny. And we'll get her flipped around and uh, do the inside. I wanted to showcase a, uh, this is how I check depth. Um, I've got a little uh, depth gauge made up. It's this little block that sits against the uh, lathe. It sits in the same spot up against the uh, headstock. And then I made this little block up with a bolt. It's uh, adjustable. Um, so when you put the head of the bolt against the front of the jaws there, the wood should also touch the block. And I'll bring you around here and show you. As you can see, there's there's a 30 second. That's kind of like my uh, little bit of leeway there so I don't screw up. But you see it touches the jaws and touches the block at almost the same time. So that's how I know what my depth is. The gap there at the wooden blocks is what I have left for depth. And I'll show that here in a little bit once I get some hollowing out done. Um, I'm marking up where I want. I want a little bead on the uh, rim. So I'm just kind of marking that out so I know how far in to go when I'm doing these wings, flatten everything off. And you see there I took the Sharpie and made a mark on my tool rest as well. Because I can't see where the edge of those wings are. Um, it's just, you can't see it. Sometimes you can get a shadow just right, but, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't this time. I'm being careful going slow. Um, you don't want to get your knuckles on there, because it won't feel good. Then you'll see me with more band-aids and electrical tape on my hand. Checking for flats too, you can see. I think this is sped up to, like, 1500 or 
but I'm just taking it easy, working my way in there, little bits at a time. check it for depth so I put my block against the uh, headstock and then I put the bolt against the bottom of the bowl and I'm gonna adjust the camera here a little bit probably should have maybe reshot the scene but yeah you can see that's how much depth is in the bottom of that bowl so I gotta take some off oh well, back to it and you'll see me check several times it's real fast to check See, check. It only takes an instant in your check, and you know 100%, no guesswork. And then we're going to check again, and I think, what is that, three-eighths of an inch? Less than a half, more than a quarter, so eh, we'll say three-eighths. So that's final depth on the bottom. Double checking, make sure everything's where I like it. And we're going to sand from 80 to 400. Again, I'm not going to show you all this. I, I, I tortured you with the outside. Here we go. <laughs> and I'm going to take a sanding block and do the uh, end grain flat sides. To make sure those are perfectly flat. And I shot this from uh, 120 up to 320. I included this sequence here because my original plan was to use my coal jaws to hold it. But I kind of wanted to show you, um, nobody ever shows how much work goes into setting up coal jaws correctly for a bowl. So I figured I'd show you this. It's just at like 2,000%. It took 12 or 13 minutes, I think is the actual total time on this little uh, clip here. So I, I sped it way up. and As you can see here, I just couldn't get it to center. I didn't like it. So, change of plans. We're going to go with the old jam chuck, which is what I should have went with in the beginning. whole lot quicker. So it's just a piece of wood chucks into the chuck with a piece of uh, non-slip foam to protect the bowl. And the uh, center I'm using is actually my uh, center that I use for attaching my uh, glued-on glue blocks, the threaded live center. It has a flat base on it, so I won't put a dent in the bottom of the bowl. It doesn't dig into the bowl. But you got to be careful because you can easily rip the uh, bowl out of the, uh, off the lathe here. So you can see I took little passes. And then we go through and sand it up. And I sped this way up as I go through all the grits again. And you'll see what I mean about it leaves the... Uh, bottom of the bowl perfect when I pull this away. There's no dent, no ding. Um, I don't need to do any sanding. Uh, I'm done with sanding at this point. So it'll be on to finish. All right, general finishes, wood bowl finish. Dump it in, rub it around. Like I say, I like doing all my finishing off the lathe. Freeze up the lathe. I can bring this inside where it's temperature controlled. Um, out in the shop, the temp varies. Some, you know, in the summer it's really hot and this stuff sets up too fast for me to get it on. In the winter it's cold and it won't set up. I'll do that two times. Three times, actually. And burning the logo on. And then it'll be, uh, my outro. All right, I got another one done. This is a square bowl of Siberian elm. Figure I'd showcase some uh, different techniques and all that stuff. You know, show that I'm capable of doing more than just a round bowl on a faceplate. <laughs> but yep, I decided to use a, a mortise on this one. Um, and I decided to go in my sanding a little bit and show you that stuff. Um, Video might end up a little bit long. I don't know. I haven't edited it yet. I'm just filming the outro right now. But anyway, it's a square bowl of Siberian Elm. Um, 
I made sure to make sure it was exactly square side to side when I cut it on that bandsaw. A little rim on it. But it's cool. A good place to hold on to, too. You know, for your soup and stuff. And Molly had to just bump the camera stand. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please, I'm going to beg for likes, subscribes, and shares. Like I say, uh, my goal is to uh, get monetized and, you know, eventually be able to do this for a living, you know. That way I can stay creative instead of doing production work. You know, I like being creative. <laughs> All right, anybody, enjoy.